Well, all right. Well, today's the day, hopefully, that I can get some paint on this thing. And uh, maybe tomorrow get it seasoned. Made a couple of changes since the last video. Uh, I changed out my the little hood up on the top. I put a bigger a bigger thing on there because I was still getting a little bit of rain down in the down in the smokestack. So I changed that out, made it a little bit bigger, uh, thinking that'll work just fine. But also, I've uh, I've added another grate. And uh, there's six and a half inches from that grate up to the very top up here. So, man, I mean, if I needed to, I could get three briskets in there. <laughs> this thing is uh, 22 inches by 48 inches. So it, it's a big grate. Uh, I've actually got a lot of square footage in here now. Uh, there's seven and a half inches between the bottom grate and the top grate so I shouldn't have any problem putting any kind of meat in there but uh but yeah and I've just been going over uh you know knocking down all my tack welds and doing some grinding and things like that just basic cleaning up knocking off any burrs things like that on here and uh yeah well hopefully Hopefully I can get this thing prepped and painted today. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm getting ready, getting ready to to uh, start trying to strip this paint off. Some of the tools I got for the job is uh, these things here. Uh, I really like the way that thing works. Uh, it does a really good job, and I got another uh, cup wire wheel. But I also, I also have these things, these uh, paint stripper, these paint stripper uh, attachments for an angle grinder. I don't know, never used them. Uh, I've seen good reviews on them. I've seen bad reviews. But yeah, that's uh, these things and those things. Uh, but first of all, I'm gonna try my sandblaster. Now, I've had this thing for a couple of years, never had any good luck with it, but uh, I think it's because I was using the, the play sand, and that stuff, it's just, it's really hard to use, and it's also very dangerous for your respiratory system, too. So I got this stuff here. Uh, I'm assuming that it's medium, uh, which I don't, didn't actually see it on the bag, but I think this is the medium. Uh, media. Uh, I've only got one bag, so I, I realize that I'm not going to be able to do the entire smoker. But what I'm planning on doing with it, <clears throat> if I can get it to work, is just get the hard areas, the areas like in here where I can't get a wire brush or around the hinges and you know areas like that. I know I can strip this paint with those wire brushes, but uh getting in these t really tight areas like in here and and all that's going to be really hard so uh that's what i got the sandblaster for and uh and of course i'll do as much of it as i can but i want to start on the really tough areas first and uh and then hopefully i'm going to get ready to paint and the paint that i'm going to be using is the rust-oleum high heat it's right here Let me see here if I can get in here. This is a Rust-Oleum High Heat. And you can actually put this stuff over a little bit of rust, not a lot of rust. But I'm gonna try to strip this thing down uh, just to absolutely as far as I can and get everything off of it that I possibly can. But that's gonna be the smoker and the firebox. It's gonna be that color. The, uh, the frame and the table and possibly the handle and I don't know, maybe a couple other things are going to be this red here. I'm, I'm going to use the rattle cans for it. And everywhere I, everywhere I paint red, we'll get a clear coat. If anybody's ever used this Rust-Oleum paint, you know that uh, 
if you spray the paint that it uh, it looks beautiful for the first couple of weeks and then the next thing you know it's all dull and everything like that it's kind of kind of like my little uh, my flux core cart right over here uh, it just it doesn't look good but if you shoot a coat of clear over the top of it it'll it'll stay glossy and pretty so uh, anyway that's what I'm that's what I'm doing but I'm gonna spread I'm gonna spread the black paint with a roller and a brush uh, I actually tried it with my other smoker which was a lot smaller than this from from uh, rattle cans and uh, I couldn't even hold the button down by the by the time I was done so anyway that's that all right well let's try this thing <laughs> see how it does Up. all right well man this thing was really doing a great job but it did wear down really quick but now i gotta admit this is this is really tough stuff i mean it, it's like really really tough but uh man this thing just stripped it right off of there but uh, it wears it down pretty quick. It never did actually clog. I thought it was going to clog up, but it never did clog. Uh, sandpaper and grinder wheels and stuff like that, that stuff clogs up immediately. So like a flat disc won't work here. Uh, it just it just, it just clogs up really fast. But I'm going to go to that, uh, to that wire brush. The... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this one, and uh, uh, I know it won't wear out as fast, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Well, it's going pretty good with the wire brush. Uh, it it actually it comes off about the same as it does with that little plastic stripping wheel, but the wire brush don't wear out like that thing does. Well, my arms are sore, but that's pretty much got this thing as far as I can get it. There's a, a spot of paint right here. I just can't get off. Uh, I mean, even with that knotted wire monster that I'm using. But anyway, that's got that's got the paint gone. Alright, well, just gonna start wiping it down. I'm just gonna use Windex because it will remove any oil or anything like that. Of course, I don't think there's any oil on here, but, but uh, Windex is really good. Most people like to use acetone, but I don't have any uh, on hand. But I'm just gonna wipe this thing down. The, uh, the can of Rust-Oleum actually says to wash it, uh, which would be good, but, but the only way I can get it over to my wash area is with the Apocamore, whose battery's dead. <laughs> but I'm just going to wipe it down good with the Windex. You know, make sure I don't have any oils and stuff like that on here. And then we're gonna 
Computer painted. Well, all right. Just getting ready to start painting this thing. Uh, I'm going to use a brush to get the areas that uh, I won't be able to get with a roller. I've already sprayed like my my spring handles and things like that. They've got three coats already and so does my vent and those other pieces I was showing a minute ago. So uh, but no, let's uh, let's see if we can get started on this. We can just get her going. Oh, it'll be kind of kind of tough to get around these welds and all this with a roller so so I'm just going to use a brush around some of these areas okay I thought I was recording that but uh, I'm just, uh, I'm rolling it right now. Uh, just got my roller out. I think I got most of the areas with the paint brush. So now I'm just uh, rolling it out. And uh, man, it, it's working really, really good. I mean, the roller's covering good. But I will be doing three coats on here. We'll be doing three coats. Well, I'm back to using my phone again because, of course, my battery died. But I got all my tough areas with a paintbrush. So now I'm going back and I'm rolling it. Now, actually, I had, uh, I thought I was recording a few minutes ago. And uh, come to find out I wasn't. But uh, uh, I painted that whole back side uh, thinking I was recording, and I really wasn't. But this, this stuff's rolling on really good. And uh, it's actually... I, I don't know, satisfying. It's, it's really kind of satisfying. I... This will definitely have to have three coats. The other one I painted, the firebox actually got so hot that it uh, it began rusting all right well that's the end of the first coat uh, well I still got to do that door don't I didn't do the back side of the door okay but uh, I'm gonna hit that I'm still well within my two hour deal so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, on the second coat. Even even got the bottom. I don't know if you can see that good or not, but everything's got paint on it. So we should be good to go. Now I'll get the second and third coats on. Should have enough paint. I haven't quite used half a can, but that first coat always takes more paint. So I'm gonna continue on and I'll be back when I get this done. Man, it's really looking, really looking nice. <clears throat> and uh, I'm really excited about it. I don't have time to paint the frame and all today. So that'll be tomorrow, but I'll still, I'll still be able to season it. And, and get the frame painted. So, all right, <clears throat> well, this thing's all ready to go. Uh, the outside paint is good and dry. It's got a coat of dew on it right now. But uh, <clears throat> one thing I thought of last night I didn't mention in, in the video uh, earlier was uh, resp respiratory protection. Uh, this thing could have had like lead paint 
in it or something. I know it's a really old tank, so uh, you know it could have had lead in it. You don't really know what you're grinding off of there, and it's in the air uh, as dust when you when you do. So uh, you know, just be aware that you need to protect your lungs and all. But today we're gonna we're gonna uh, take care of the stand and the table, and we're gonna do the inside. Uh, we're gonna season the inside and we're gonna paint all of this other stuff that's on the outside. So uh, all it really involves is, you know, knocking off the surface rust and stuff and uh, getting ready to paint. So uh, we'll see, there's a lot of rust in here. I've got the wire brush. I'm gonna try to get all that off. Uh, it doesn't actually all have to come out but the more you get out, the better off uh, you know, you'll be later on. there my friends was what you call a dirty job all right I've, I've gone over all of this with uh, wire brushes and and, uh, and all that now I'm just gonna go try to take out the main majority of all the loose crap with this and uh, it's just a, a wet towel I'm just gonna go over it and try to get some of that stuff up and uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a dirty job. This will just get the bulk before I put my Windex on here. All right, let's just let's just give this thing a good a good wipe down with Windex. And really, in here, all I'm trying to do is just get, you know, little dust particles and stuff like that out of here. Uh, the Windex really isn't going to do anything in particular inside. But what it will do is, uh, uh, on the outside, it'll clean any, any you know, kind of contaminants or anything like that off the frame. Got everything wiped down uh, with Windex and uh, got it kind of cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and put my oil on the inside and over the door and all that. Notice I, I painted all the way, all the way here, and even right along the edge here uh, because that's not actually inside. Okay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna wipe everything down with oil. 
you don't need a big heavy coat of oil in here. Now, in the ends, I'll probably just spray and let it go where it wants to go. But the rest of it, I'm just going to wipe down and, and let it sit. I'm also going to do the grates at the same time. Then I'm going to put the grates back in here and all that, close everything up. I guess I'll close everything up. Tape everything off, and I'll start working on painting uh, the frame. I hope I got enough. This stuff is really soaking it up. All of these things. Now I'm going to try to avoid getting it on my outside paint. So I'm mainly going to just wipe those areas. I'm even gonna I'm even gonna do the inside of my burn of my uh, smokestack. This won't take but one coat. I'm just wiping everything down now to kind of even even out the the oil and. Uh, I've already, I did the lid, but I want to make sure that this oil gets all over all the metal surfaces in here. It'll help protect it against rust. It won't prevent rust, but it'll help protect it a little bit. Well, all right, there's me three coats of red and one coat of clear. And it, I think it looks fantastic. I got a couple of runs, you know, here and there, but, uh, but it, uh, I think it still turned out good. <clears throat> Even up under, oh, I got every bit of it up under here didn't miss any spots i don't think uh, of course i'll find out once i get the tape off all right i'm gonna throw some thermometers in here and then i'm gonna uh fire it up these are the thermometers these are the thermometers that i got uh they're on, i got them from ebay and uh well there we go let's just throw them around I got them off of eBay, and uh, I've used them several times. I keep ordering them from this same guy, and uh, they work really good, and they're they're pretty accurate too. Uh, and you can see right here, they're both telling exactly the same temperature, you know. And uh, and I've got one on my old smoker. And it's always worked really good. And I've got one on the smoker that I built just recently. And it's working pretty good. And I just lost the back ring to this thing. Okay, well, I just lost the back ring to this one. I'm going to have to go find it. All right, well, let's get this thing fired up. Got my little starter here filled with charcoal and newspaper at the bottom. Let's see how she does. While this is getting ready, I'm going to go ahead and take all the tape off. Uh, this thing burning and get it heated up have to lay that in sideways it's a little bit long 
Don't ever pay anybody for firewood, guys. Well, all right. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to try to get this thing up to 350 degrees. And uh, I'm going to hold it there for about an hour, an hour and a half. And that's all it takes to season this thing. But <clears throat> I also want to make sure that, you know, the paint on on the inside of the burn box that's any that's going to burn or anything that may burn off, I want to get it hot enough to do all of that. So uh, got a lot of moisture in that wood, too. You can see the smoke's like kind of white. Uh, that's because, well, it hadn't been two or three minutes since I put... Since I started the fire, so that wood's still trying to dry out. And every time you put wood in it, it's probably going to do that. But this thing's doing pretty good. I've got uh, both thermometers now are showing 100 degrees inside here, so and you can feel it's warm. But uh, we're just going to see what happens. I'm just going to keep throwing wood in there. All right, we're up to seasoning temp. This thing will probably never be this hot again, but uh, <clears throat> these temperatures are necessary to burn off, you know, uh, paint and stuff like that. And it's also uh, to bake that oil onto all the steel surfaces on the inside. So if we did everything right, it should be really pretty in there when we get done. But uh, yeah, man, she's just chugging, chugging along. I mean, I'm loving this smoker. It's been a long road, but uh, we got it. And the temperatures are looking really good. I've got uh, about 350 here. I'm going to come back in about an hour, and this one's about 20 degrees less. But if this was a normal offset with the smokestack down on this end down here, uh there would be a lot bigger difference in these temperatures. Uh, and I'm thinking that they're probably gonna actually even back out a little bit closer uh, as this thing settles in at 350. So uh, anyway, we'll see how that works out. Well, all right. <clears throat> it's been about an hour, hour and 10 minutes or so. This thing really holds temperature really well. Uh, it's about 25 degrees difference between the two sides, it remained that the entire time. Uh, this thing will probably never be this hot again. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's see what the inside looks like. Oh yeah. This is well seasoned. Well seasoned. You can see how the, the oil has baked on. It's baked on the top. And it's also baked onto the onto the grates. So that'll that'll help protect it from rust. And it'll also help protect uh keep food from sticking. Uh so anyway, I'm gonna let this thing cool down and uh burn the fire on out what's in there, what's left. I never had to change the uh vent once once it hit 350 degrees and i i moved the vent and once i finally got it dialed in uh i never had to change it again I, i've i put uh five or six different pieces of wood in there and uh yeah it just it it just sits there on temperature right where you right where you want it so uh all right well let me uh let me conclude this. Well, all right. Well, what started out as a 330-gallon, old, nasty, rusty propane tank is now my new smoker. Reverse flow, offset, and uh, man, it's great. It holds temperature really good. Uh, it's easy to maintain that temperature. Uh, I could not ask for anything more except to get something cooking on it. <clears throat> but uh, I want to say thank you to, uh, to everybody who's, who's watched this series. Uh, 
I said in the beginning that it was going to be an adventure. I tried to show all my processes and how and my train of thought when I was doing uh, different aspects of this build and uh, listening to your comments and reading reading your comments and I incorporated a lot of those. They were uh, had really good comments and, and good feedback through this whole project and I really want to thank all my viewers for that. <clears throat> And uh, hey, I mean, what what do you what do you say? I've got my new smoker, and this thing's a beast. It's it's got about 16.8 square feet of cooking surface in here. Uh, that that's a lot of cooking surface. I could cook for a hundred people if I wanted to, and that's coming up. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks again for watching and coming along with me on this adventure um, <clears throat> I've got about and this includes everything all my supplies everything about seven hundred and thirty two dollars in this build uh, that was including the propane tank that I got for hundred and fifty dollars and I've still got the propane tank over there and I got uh, sheet scrap and things like that that I can use on another project also so it it really didn't cost quite that much but uh and i've had it's been about a month or no about two months since i started this but man all the rain good lord and it's supposed to rain again tomorrow i got really lucky that i could get this all done today but uh it's uh it's been it's been a pretty good little little ride and uh thank you for coming along with me and uh my my MiG-140, my titanium MiG-140 from Harbor Freight was the star of the show. It, it did everything I asked of it and just kept going and kept going. When I was making these long welds like around through here and doing the smokestack and the burn box, man, it just, it just never quit. It just kept going and going and going. But uh, she shall have a name. And her name shall be Gertie. So this is Gertie, guys. I hope you like it. Uh, don't ask the backstory behind Gertie. But uh, my daughter likes that name, so that's what it is. <laughs> y'all have a good day, and I'll see y'all down the road.